that she was living. Well, they have different people that live there, and most of them, if not all of them, have some sort of mental problems. Some are not. Some are somewhat, uh, you know, some more worse than others. Right. Well, she brought in this one guy. I, you don't know who's coming and going in there because they just bring in people. Some people stay for a really long time, and other people stay for a short time. Right. Well, this one, this one guy she brought in. After, I learned this after the fact. He has a current a record of assault uh, and sexual assault, uh, uh, other crimes similar, similar similar to that. However, the county recommended that he stay there, and she, the owner, accepted him to stay there. And my mom was assaulted by him. Right. And the only only thing that happened was uh, he was sent to a, a state institution for mental evaluation to, de- to determine whether he was competent to stand trial. And they kept telling me and my mom to come to the hearing, and we would come to a hearing where he was supposed to be. And I said, oh, we're sorry, he's not going to be here after all because he's still in, he- in the, at the Capitol or wherever being evaluated to get stand trial. Right. What is your email address? My email? Uh-huh. T is in Paul. C is in Pat. Y is in Yellow. P is in Pat? Is or C is in Cat. Okay. P-C-Y. J-R-2 at Gmail. JR2 at Hotmail or email? Uh, Gmail. Gmail. Okay, so uh, PCYJR2 at gmail.com. Right, PC as in personal computer. Okay. Y as in yellow, Y as in yellow pages. And then JR. Like junior. All right. And number two. What state are you in? Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. I'm going to email you real quick. Um, what it is is corporate policy. Um, your mother is delineated an animal under corporate policy. You can tell that by the case number. Um, the sexual abuser is there to sexual abuse. They don't get anything that actually occurs to them because it's policy. All of policy goes, the back end of policy, of course, is insurance. And what they're doing is they're generating revenue by putting your mother, an animal on a farm, um, in the line of fire. And so um, what had happened recently, they were outing policy in, I think it was Utah or Colorado. Let me go look. Um, So their policy, uh, there was a female that was institutionalized. in a semi-assisted living uh, arrangement in, let me look here, I gotta get my glasses on, California actually, not Colorado. Um, She was in the retirement home and she began choking on food, choking to death. And the, um, the nurse there, according to policy, could not perform CPR. Her policy and rule book said that she could not perform CPR. She had to wait for 911 or, or uh, first responders to get there. Well, eventually the woman died, of course, but that's according to policy. Now, the back end of that one is death derivatives. And so your mother, when she was assaulted, um, they're cashing in on that. When other people are assaulted, they cash in on that. And the thing is, is that when they when they incarcerate this individual they only do that for a very short amount of time maybe one month two months three months and what they're doing is they're making that individual more aggressive like they did to charles manson he was created by the system and at the other end of that aggression he will murder but that's all according to policy and then he's institutionalized and he generates revenue based on his institutionalization so they never lose anything the only rule of usufruct is that the capacity never diminishes so the productive ability it never does anything it never goes anywhere they just become more productive more productive more productive and part of that product is allowing your mother to be victimized to be um, held hostage by institutionalized states and the safest thing for you to do is to garner her into your home and take care of your mother yourself otherwise she is used as a product that's one of the I struggle with communicating with my mom about that and 
and uh, she she doesn't she doesn't she lost her motivation or something. She doesn't want to um, stay here with me. I had a, I had a nice side of a house, and uh, see what happened was my dad passed away, and she uh, uh, about lived on her own about another year or two, and she started breaking down, couldn't keep couldn't keep herself going anymore. So I said you could stay here, but she chose to go with the office of on aging and allowed them to put her in a um, one of these assisted living homes. Yeah. And everything was going fine there, but it was another location. But then she, for some reason, wanted to go or, or was taken to this other location. And um, but I told her many times. I said you should. I said that's ridiculous. What's going on there? Not to mention those other residents that live there. All they do is bump money off of one another and ask each other do they have cigarettes and candy and do you have a quarter and they're kidding or exciting get something out of a vending machine. And I said, you know, they're not interested in taking care of you. Why do you want to put your faith and trust in strangers when here I am? I'm here. I would help take care of you. I can do your laundry. I could tell you it's time to get up and make your breakfast and, and do as much as I can to take care of you. And I even found out this organization here that's in Pennsylvania or this county that they pay you to uh, keep your loved one in the house uh, $10 an hour for the time that they, if, they, if they qualify for this particular program. And then when you're not in the house, they have their people come in and stay with your loved one for up to, I think it's up to 10 hours per day. Because my mom is the type where she doesn't want to stay alone. She likes she has to be around other people, you know. She wasn't like that before when my dad was here, but she, she got like that after he passed away. Right. And that's that female. And one of the worst things is that that female, the metaphor on, of Eve in the, in the Bible is that Eve goes off and contracts with the other daddy, with the other protector, with the system, and enters into its design while it tricks her out. And the only way to pull her out of that, of course, is to leave it at her, um, her will, whatever she wants. If she likes being treated like an animal, She'll stay over there. If she doesn't, then she'll come over to you, the father. And and that's the hardest thing that we run into every single day because there's so many options available. She has so many benefits and she has such a social acti uh, um, active lifestyle uh, where she's at. But we cannot force anybody to come over to this side. We can't force anybody because it's all free will under ecclesiastical law. And, and just the, the basic nature of humanity itself. And um, it's, it's one of the hardest things you'll ever have to go through, <laughs> you know. Um, when you go back into reading Matthew, for example, um, you know, when the di disciples came to Jesus at one point, one of them said, you know what, uh, let me go back and, and save my father. I want to pull him out of the system. And Jesus said, well, there's no other option. You follow me or you let the dead bury their own dead. And that's what he was indicating that, you know, you can't just rip them out of their little security blanket. You can't rip them out of anywhere. You have to allow it to be free will. And yes, it hurts like hell, but that's the only option we have. If, if she wants to be with the other dad, then that's, you know, that is her option. Um, I'm going to send you a couple uh, YouTube audios as well as a uh, um, couple articles on, on uh, human trafficking, what they're actually doing, uh, the maintained policy, um, and other things maybe your mom might want to listen to, or maybe your family. Do you have other family members that might be able to reach her? No, I'm her closest living relative. Uh she has a daughter, but they don't get along too well, and um, pretty much out of her life, but, um, other than the holidays, but they just have a brief conversation. And, but I've literally spent hours telling her and talking to her and educating her and, and, and uh, motivating her, and, and I just got to a point where I thought, I think I'm doing myself more harm than, than uh, you know, and I ended up harming myself instead of helping anyone, and I just... I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't give up, but I also, I don't harp on it like as much as I used to. Right, and and we're not able, you know. Years ago, I went through the same experience. My mother's a psychopath. My father, the, however, um, was not psychopathic, and and he was being abused by the system. However, and and herself, um, 
the thing was is that he was on veterans benefits and social security and he was completely against everything in a, that I stood for and fearful you know of losing his money and so he took in exchange for his daughter which is me he took those benefits of the other daddy while it killed him slowly um, you know in the end he had uh, Agent Orange from Vietnam he had mesothelioma from working at Hanford um, you know, working for that daddy, and um, eventually it killed him. He died on uh, March 11th of this year, and, uh, but, you know, it took me almost all of my life, my, my adult life, um, of sticking around him and trying to save him, when in reality I was allowing myself to be abused and subjugated by the same system, and I was constantly you know my mother's the one that ended up um along with her attorney lover and a cop who tried to kill me back in 2010 and it took until that point in time when i realized you have to let them go you have to um do whatever it is for you to survive and go forward and and really honestly just exactly like jesus teaches let the dead bury their own dead it's not worth uh, the cost you know we're not subscribing to that other father we're not patronizing it and calling it dad um, we're not you know adhering to it we're not enabling it we're not uh, supporting it in any way and and so you do you have to walk away but first you know the, the number one rule is that you you attempt to open their eyes um, and show them what's wrong and show them what's happening uh, you know going back into such as the coronation charter and showing your mother how she is crucified that's that's the crucifixion of christ um jesus ge space s u i s means your earth and to pull it off of the cross is when you realize that you have to do that you are the authority and if she doesn't want to do that there's nothing we can do she's just eve and and she's contracted with the other daddy oh i forgot that one um I've got a, a video on that one uh, called Contracting with the Law Merchant that I'll send you right now. Um, you should have already received the other uh, email in your email uh, already because I already sent that one off. I just forgot the uh, Contracting with the Law Merchant, which is a metaphor of Eve. You know, we, as a female, I'm a female. I don't claim to be a female because that's a title that that the law merchant sells us in order to for it to sell us back our rights that they took upon us accepting that concept and when you go back into Wycliffe's Bible for example Wycliffe had translated the Bible uh, directly out of Greek um, it, it maintains this you know God did not create the heavens and earth he accepted all of these things. He collected it as concepts. And that's what the law merchant does. It sells us concepts by which we, we have to then buy our rights and benefits from it and continue our patronage to it. And so once you step away from that and you drop the titles, you drop female, mother, father, aunt, uncle, uh, brother, sister, um, you know, black, white, red, brown, uh, boy, girl, whatever it is, gay, straight. When you drop all those things, you no longer have to purchase your rights and benefits from the law merchant, and you actually stand in your authority. Right. Uh, and there's no other option. Uh, Jesus kept maintaining continually, not only to let the dead bury their own dead, but also, you know, don't cast your pearls to swine. If they don't hear you, they don't hear you. Uh, Matthew 18 reiterates that. You you go to your brother personally or your sister to find out if they're your brother and sister. And um, if they don't hear you, take it to counsel. Take it to one of your brothers and sisters or one of your community friends, those that your mother knows. And, um, you know, after that, take it to a group, which is a church, not to the church. He said, uh, take it to those who are least esteemed in the, in the church, which is 1 Corinthians 6. Uh, but Matthew 18 reiterates, you know, if, if they're your brother and sister or your whatever, they're going to hear you. If they don't hear you, then that's, you did your job. You did what you were obligated to do, and it's time to move on. Um, but I thought that perhaps that 
even if my mom decides to stay there, which she presently is, that there should be some sort of uh, uh, some sort of remedy or compensation or, or something that somebody has to suffer because she uh, somebody has to suffer a loss other than just my mom because this lady uh, was well aware of this man's background and yes, they all she took are. upon herself to allow him to be in this home with other with other women, not just my mom, but all those other women. Right, they all and are. Totally and that's part of policy. That's how they cash in. They get your mother's contracting with the law merchant. And in that in that contract, those are part of her benefits is being abused. That's part of her benefit of being a citizen, of being contracted with the law merchant, of accepting a benefit. If you, uh, in Black's Law Dictionary, the uh, doctrine of election is what it's under. When you're electing either a right or a benefit, a benefit is her, you know, being in there. You don't get your rights. Doctrine of election um, subscribes that uh, you either get a right or a benefit. And when you take the benefit, which is beneficium abstinendi, you're actually giving up your inheritance. You're giving up uh, by acquiescence your right to be the heir uh, and that's what the system relies on it relies on uh, that contract she created the contract she's in the contract and that's one of the benefits of policy is her being harmed in exchange for those benefits and, and like i said it's the hardest thing you're ever going to witness but there's no way to pull them out it has to be free will unless she is mentally incompetent and at that point, you can step in as her, um, it's called a voluntary pilot. You can step in and steer the vessel as if she would have steered it. However, at this time, I believe that she'd pull back and, and fight you on that. And then you end up, again, uh, devouring your own tail. It doesn't get you anywhere. Okay, I look forward to your email, and I'll follow up with you, too, as well. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye.